This young girl accidentally fell asleep while taking a bath. Moments later, bizarre creatures from the outside world crawl all over her body. Marty's father is a chemical expert who works for the Environmental Protection Agency. Due to the demands of his job, Mark's father took the family on a drive to a military zone in the southern United States. While passing a gas station on the way, Marty went to the bathroom to take care of a physical problem. But as soon as she entered, a man pushed her against the door. At that moment, outside the door, Marty's young stepmother was chasing, playing with her brother. No one was aware of the danger Marty was facing. However, the man didn't mean to hurt Marty. He told Marty that some things are out there and they are everywhere. They also take people while they're sleeping. If she doesn't want to get hurt, she should get her family out of here or you'll be next. Marty was terrified by the way the men were acting. But at this point, she doesn't know what that means. When she got out of the house, Marty told her father that she had met a crazy man with a knife. After hearing this, Mark rushed to the bathroom with the gas station staff, but by now the man in the toilet had long disappeared. After arriving at their destination, the family moved into a family building in the base. While the adults were packing their bags, the bored Marty wandered around the base, but she was not familiar with the terrain when she first arrived. Soon she was surrounded by a group of soldiers because she had inadvertently walked into a restricted area of the base. But then Lily, who was driving a sports car, appeared in time and helped her out. Marty was not embarrassed by the soldiers. The two girls, who were close in age, chatted while driving around. Soon they became friends. Only then did Marty realize, why did the soldiers listen to Lily? It turned out that she was the daughter of the person in charge of this base. And at that moment, Mark met with the head of the base and started his work under the leadership of the soldiers. While Mark was squatting by the river to get a sample of the river water, Ani, the chief of the base's medical department approached him. He wanted to know if the toxic chemical products could cause insanity. According to Ani, recently, there was a strange phenomenon in the army. Many soldiers were suffering from a very serious paranoia. The main symptom is the fear of sleeping and facing their families. In addition to that, they also often suspect the identity of other people. Mark didn't know what was going on in the army, but he was sure it had nothing to do with chemicals. Because the symptoms that Ani described were not physical, it was a psychological problem. Ani was very concerned about the health of the soldiers on the base. So he asked Mark, so he asked Mark to contact him first if he found anything related to this. While they were talking, several soldiers knocked on Marty's door. They brought some sealed boxes into Marty's house. They told her that these were experimental equipment sent from the base. At first, Marty didn't notice anything unusual, but after she saw the soldiers carrying the boxes into her bedroom, she felt something was wrong afterwards. If it was experimental equipment, why was it in her bedroom? But the soldiers didn't answer Marty's question. After putting the case away, they left Marty's house. Soon after, the family gradually adjusted to life on the base. Marty's brother, Andy also started attending kindergarten on the base. During an art class, Andy suddenly realized that all the children's drawings were the same. Feeling that he was different from everyone else, Andy became angry, so he sneaked out of the kindergarten when the teacher wasn't looking. As he walked, Andy got lost and came to the soldier training ground. A handsome soldier finds Andy and sends him home. Soldier Tim fell in love with Marty at first sight. He immediately offered to take Marty out for a ride. But at that moment, Marty's father arrived home from work, so the plan had to be cancelled. In the late afternoon, Lily came to pick up Marty and take her to the only bar on the base to relax. Coincidentally, Tim was also drinking here, so they got to talking. At that moment, a familiar face walked into the bar. Marty instantly got nervous when she saw her. This is the same man she met in the bathroom. But the man was like a different person. His face was serious and he didn't even look at Marty. After Marty brought up the incident in the toilet, the man didn't say anything either. It was as if he had never seen Marty before. The man's behavior made Marty very confused. He even wondered if she had remembered the wrong person. After coming out of the bar, Tim took Marty to a hidden grove in the middle of the base. In the hazy night air, they couldn't help but kiss each other. And not far from them, by the creek, soldiers were carrying the strange egg-shaped objects from the creek to their vehicles. Meanwhile, Marty's brother Andy woke up and came next door to find his mother. He happens to see his mother in bed, 
rapidly deflating. This bizarre scene frightened and he screamed. At that moment, a completely naked mother slowly came out from next door. Only it was different from before. The expression on her face was hard. There was no end of emotion in her eyes when she looked at Andy. Terrified, Andy screamed and ran downstairs and told his father about it. But his father, Mark, thought Andy was too young. He had a nightmare and couldn't tell the difference between dreams and reality. Mark didn't take his words to heart. Andy ran to the yard and saw Tim taking Marty home. So Andy told Marty about it again, like his father Mark. Marty thought Andy was having a nightmare. When Andy tried to deny it, Mark appeared at the bedroom door. He called Marty out and scolded her. The father was upset that Marty was late for a date with a boy. They got into a heated argument about it. Andy's affair is naturally forgotten. The next day, Mark came to the chemical warehouse, as usual to do sample, testing when there was an accident in the warehouse. A sealed can containing a highly toxic drug accidentally falls from a height. A soldier was hit. He suffered a serious injury to his leg. Mark thought the flesh and blood of the wound looked very strange. It didn't look like the kind of wound that a chemical could cause. Just as Mark was about to examine him, Mark's attention was drawn to the unusual attitude of the other soldiers. He took advantage of the fact that all the soldiers had left. He took a sample of the wounded soldier's blood from his protective suit. But to her shock, the fluid in the sample wasn't blood. He did all the toxicology tests but couldn't find out what the liquid was. To find out what the substance was, Mark called a lab he knew and asked about it but the other side also need to get a sample to analyze. So Mark promised that he would send the sample tomorrow. At the end of the day, Andy was sitting on his bed looking depressed. Marty thought he just didn't like the life here. So she reassured him soon the family would be able to go home after their father finished his work. Andy knew no one would believe anything he said. All he could do was tell Marty to stay awake because when she does, something bad will happen. Unfortunately, Marty didn't take that to heart. Then, she accidentally fell asleep in the shower, and on the ceiling of the bathroom, a strange egg fished out of the creek moved. Numerous milky white insect-like tentacles crawled out. They soon crawled all over Marty's body. Then they burrowed into Marty's body by covering her ears and nose. At this moment, the strange egg on the ceiling suddenly glowed red. A closer look, a tiny embryo in the center of the egg was developing rapidly. In a short time, it grew into a human form. At the same time, Mark slowly sat her down on the bed in the bedroom with his waist pressed. The wife saw this and took out the oil to give Mark a back massage. Mark also obediently lay down on the bed. Under his wife's careful care, Mark drifted off to sleep. The strange egg in the bathroom has grown into an adult shape. The fragile ceiling rattled under the weight. Marty was awakened by the sound. Marty was awakened by the sound and felt that something was burrowing inside her. So she rushed to peel away the tentacles. Before she knew what was happening, a woman fell from the ceiling. Terrified, Marty screamed in terror. In her panic, she saw that the creature that was on top of her had a face just like hers. After easily pushing the monster away, Marty first went to her father Mark's bedroom. Mark was successfully woken up by Marty. They worked together to tear off the tentacles on her face. Just then, a large, dry hand suddenly grabbed Marty's ankle. Panicked, Marty stepped back. An underdeveloped monster emerged from under the bed. It seems that this monster is Mark's clone. After waking up, they realize the danger of the base. So they wake up Andy and prepare to escape. When they came downstairs, Mark happened to see his wife on the phone. So he asked her to run away with him. But the woman didn't panic at all. She just repeated the words with a cold face. You have nowhere to run. Mark realized then that his wife had already been replaced by a clone. Then. The woman persuaded Mark to join her while slowly approaching her. Just as Mark was about to be compelled by the replicant, Marty appeared in time with Andy in her arms. Mark then came to his senses. He pushed the clone's wife away and yelled at her, Get away from my children! After that he ran after Marty's figure. Seeing the prey in his hand running away, the clone rushed out. She pointed her finger at the three men while letting out a shrill scream. Soon, neighbors who heard the commotion came running out. Mark ran with the children. The neighbors who had become clones chased after them. After a short time of running, several middle-aged men with guns came out from behind the house. Mark thought they were replicants, 
So he stopped in his tracks. The fat soldier in the lead fired to cover them and told them to run away. The gunshot startled him. He hurriedly grabbed his clothes and prepared to go downstairs. At that moment, several expressionless soldiers surrounded him. Tim didn't know what was going on but he could sense that these men were not to be messed with. With the help of his athletic body, Tim managed to escape from the clones. At this time, Mark escaped and put his son and daughter in a warehouse, and he himself was going out to find a way to escape. Mark handed them his watch and told them that he would be back in two hours. Marty was worried about her father's comfort and didn't want him to risk his life, but his father was very determined. He told his son to listen to his sister and then left the warehouse. Taking advantage of the confusion, Mark broke a window and got into an office. Here he saw Ani, who was almost broken. It was hard to see a normal person he knew. Mark rushed up to help, but Ani told Mark that it was useless to run away. They've taken over the base now. We might as well take up our weapons and fight. That way we might have a chance to survive. Mark is just a scientist. He doesn't know how to fight. And he wants to escape. While they were arguing, a series of footsteps suddenly sounded outside the door. Mark reacted quickly and hid. And Ani was surrounded by soldiers with the head of the base. Through the conversation between them, Mark learns that these clones are actually alien beings. They have a highly focused mind. All of their people are in lockstep. In their civilization, there is no ego. The clones persuade Ani to join her. While slowly approaching him, backed into a corner, Ani shot and ended his life. Before he died, his last words were, You will never get my soul. Soon after, Mark returned safely to the warehouse. He told the boys that he had found a way out and drove them off the base with him. But on his face, Marty couldn't see a trace of happiness. Realizing that something was wrong, Marty tentatively asked her father, Where were they going? But Mark's attitude was always cold. He repeated one phrase over and over again. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry. He also instructed Marty not to show any expressions. Hearing this hard answer from her father, Marty had an answer in her mind. She took the opportunity to pull the handbrake and force the car to stop. Mark knew he was exposed, so he and Marty got into a fight. At that moment, Tim appeared in the neighborhood. After hearing the fight, she rushed over. With Tim's help, Marty shot and killed the fake father. A few moments after the father's body fell to the ground, his flesh and bones emerged as pus, and the fake shell quickly deflated. At that moment, a replicant spotted their trail, so they quickly got into the car and left the place. With many replicants chasing them, they drove to the heliport of the base. Tim went to fly the plane alone. Marty is with her brother to stay in place and wait for help. Before leaving, Marty instructed Tim to be expressionless and act like a replicant. This way, even if the replicant saw her, her identity would not be revealed. Tim arrived at his helicopter and was spotted by a legion of replicants. In a desperate situation, he claimed that he had received orders to fly the helicopter to light the way for everyone. The lead reptilian soldier doesn't believe him. In order to test him, the replicant soldier claims that he slept with Tim's girlfriend. Luckily, Tim remembered Marty's advice. He didn't show any emotion. The clone soldier then let him get on the helicopter. Soon after, Marty and Andy were captured by the clone army. They were put into an ambulance. Tim, who was flying the helicopter, saw the scene. He followed the ambulance in his helicopter. On the way, he finds that the base has been completely overrun by aliens. The whole base is like an alien hatchery. Marty and Andy were brought into the incubation center. Numerous clones are created here. Tim finds Marty and Andy being cloned, while the other clones are dealing with the struggling humans. He found Marty, who was being cloned. Just as he was about to wake Marty up, Marty's clone had successfully hatched and woke up. Tim tried to pull out Marty's tentacles when he was stopped by Marty's clone. At the risk of being discovered, Tim quickly ripped off Marty's tentacles. The next second, the Marty replicant lost its nutritional supply and struggled in pain. Marty and Tim didn't stay here long. They pretended to be clones and escaped. On the way, they saw the clone in charge of the base directing a convoy of alien eggs to various parts of the world. Then they saw Lily's clones again. They were well disguised at first. After Marty heard Lily say she saw Andy, she couldn't help but ask about Andy's whereabouts. That's when they were discovered. Lily's clone pointed at them and screamed. When the clones heard that, they immediately rushed towards them. Luckily, Tim's helicopter was nearby. They shot and covered while escaping to the helicopter. At that moment, 
and he suddenly ran out of the crowd. He was running and shouting, don't leave him behind. Marty thought nothing of it and pulled Andy onto the plane. But in fact, this Andy is also a clone. After the helicopter flew into the air, Andy clone pushed Marty away and rushed towards Tim, who was driving the helicopter. Tim rushed to remind Marty, this Andy is not her brother anymore. At this time, Marty also came to her senses. In order to escape, she decisively threw Andy's clone off the plane. They were relieved to get out of the base. Soon after, the sun rose. Tim took the helicopter to stop the cars transporting the alien eggs and blew them all up. They then blew the base to pieces. After that was done, they took the helicopter to the nearby airport. But when the plane landed, they heard the familiar tone of the clones. Where do you want to go? Where can you escape to? You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.